the snowflake rag is uh, another ragtime piece we have. Rag, ragtime. For some reason, all ragtime pieces have the word rag in it. I'm not sure why. But ragtime is a uh, is a style of music. It tells you all about it up on top. But it's a kind of a certain zone brand, kind of like jazz music or blues music. In fact, it's closely re related to both of those. So, um, you should listen to a few rags. This guy named Scott Joplin will rag your brains out. He's the rag king. So he wrote practically only ragtime music in the 1910s, something like that. But a lot of great music. So check that out, Scott Joplin. Um, in this piece, we can see uh, exactly how rag sounds. It has that chord stride in the left hand. A good way to start this piece would be actually to start looking at what your hands are doing in the left hand, or what your left hand is doing. What chord you're playing. You got the C chord, this is measure 5, 6. And I would do that, get comfortable with that first. I said so, do it. After you get the idea of that, then start putting this song together a little bit. Try the right hand with that. I would work on that main section from measure 5 to 12 a lot. If you recall when you heard my uh, performance of it, that 8 bar phrase is the same exact thing as measure 13 to 21. And is the same exact thing as 29 to 36. So if you learn that 8 bars, that sets you for the next 8 bars and in that 8 bars later too. So that's pretty much half the song. So don't go crazy stressing out trying to figure out all three pages. Just spend a lot of time on this. Watch the ties. And keep it long versus short. Okay? After you get a feel for that, let's go phrase by phrase. Let's see, in the beginning we have this little intro. Chromatic scale. That's your introduction. The rhythm is weird on that. In fact, they talk about that up on the top. You want to get that syncopated feel. So one. Make sure you get a good feel for that. Do that until it's right. Okay, that would be your first phrase. And then the second phrase we already talked about. We have some chromatic stuff happening with our playing every key. Uh, we have a big chromatic scale 11, so watch that. Count that carefully. This is going to be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. After that, watch your fingering and then you go right back into the same thing. It's just up and up. Dip. And we end it just like that at measure 19. Okay? So then we get into this B section. In our B section, we have a whole different feel. It's actually one chord to five seconds. But in A minor instead of C major. We that same rhythm as before. Okay, so really uh, work out that rhythm, make sure it sounds just like the intro. Count that one and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. Don't stop until that sounds right, because if you practice it wrong for four days, then you're gonna come to lessons and I'm gonna hate you. Not because I hate you. <laughs> um, measure 29 is back to our A section. We have the chromatic scale again at 35. Then we have a little coda, a little chromatic thing. And then we have a big two handed chromatic scale. This is counting tricky at measure 39. We want to start on the and. So I'm going to play from 37. Listen to how I count one and play on the and. Tricky. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. One. Two. So one is silent, play on the end. One and two and three and four and one. Count that, please. I don't want to hate you, but it just happens when you don't count. Okay, that's the piece. Enjoy, my friends.